I'm Jack Linkletter, and here's Hollywood. A little later, Helen O'Connell will have as her guest actor Vic Morrow. I'm headed for the Encino home of Giselle McKenzie. Born in Canada, Giselle was giving public violin concerts at the age of 12. She gave up the violin, came to the U.S., where she sang with Bob Crosby. She appeared in Las Vegas, was heard by Jack Benny, who arranged for her audition for the famous hit parade program. She got the job, did 40 shows a year, two songs a show for four years. Following this, she went on to full stardom in nightclubs and headlined her own NBC TV show. In 1958, she married her manager, Bob Shuttleworth, and they have a 10-month-old son. She's being honored with the title of honorary mayor of Encino today. We're in Encino in the valley, right across the hill from Hollywood, visiting with vocalist Giselle McKenzie. And right now, she's being bestowed the honor of being the honorary mayor of Encino. And handing her the gavel is the world's greatest archer, Howard Hill, the outgoing honorary mayor. As the outgoing mayor of, honorary mayor of Encino, I want to present to you this gavel as the incoming mayor of Encino, and I hope you have as wonderful a time being this mayor as I've had the last two years. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Hill. I just hope that I can do half as well as you did for your good work. An acceptance speech, I heard. <laughs> Congratulations, Giselle. Well, what's going to be your first official act? Well, I think what I'll start to do being a woman is cut down the council meetings to about one a year and double the mayor's salary. Oh, fine. What is your salary, Howard? Double nothing. Double nothing. <laughs> okay, Giselle, let's sit down if we may. Thank you, Your Honor. You know, coming from Winnipeg, Canada, and this is, as you know, Dad's stomping ground. Oh, yeah. His moose jaw. Uh-huh. Ever dream you'd grow up to be a lady politician? No, I must say that never crossed my mind, Jack. And, and what were you telling me that in, in Canada they don't call a mayor his honor? No, they call you your worship. Your worship? Your worship. I don't know why, because they, uh, they consider uh, your honor uh, as belonging to a judge. However, here it's a little different. Um, I answer to anything, though. Your honor, your worship, I answer. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what did you want to be when you were a little girl? Well, I was um, a big fan of my dad's, so uh, he was a pretty wonderful doctor, so I wanted to be a doctor. I don't know if I ever would have made it, but I've always been very interested in medicine. I, I imagine almost everybody knows, because your story is such a well-known one, that when you were 10, I believe it was, you were quite well-known as a violinist. Well, this wasn't your ambition at all then. No, I didn't, uh, I didn't want to be a violinist, frankly. Uh, that's why I don't miss it today too much. The only time I uh, uh, play uh, the fiddle is with Mr. Benny, so I kind of save it for then, you know. To, to reiterate about this story for a second, were you, were you pressured into taking the violin? Was it the typical family situation where they wanted the child to take up an instrument? And... Well, I guess it was that, Jack. Uh, my folks were most anxious that, uh, that I play the violin. I don't know. I guess they thought I'd give Heifetz a few headaches. Well, you and, uh, <laughs> I don't mean by you playing, I mean by, because you were quite good. <laughs> it would give my head if you heard me I mean, what I said it. I was... <laughs> but um, I, I wasn't, uh, it wasn't really in my heart. I wanted to sing. The trouble is when I was a kid, nobody wanted to listen to me. But um, things have worked out just fine. I must say my education as a violinist and as a musician came in very handy. And uh, that I, I am very grateful for, of course. But, uh, again, I can always say it wasn't all in vain because I did get to play duets with Mr. Benny. Surely. Uh, how did you finally get around to persuading your parents to let you quit, or was it...? Well, uh, my violin was stolen, which helped, and uh, they never found it. I think the police thought I did it. <laughs> but, uh, actually, it was a very fine instrument, and it was stolen, so... At that time, I had just started singing professionally. My husband, Bob Shuttleworth, whom you know... Who will meet in a minute. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, was really the one who talked me out of playing the violin. He said, you know, let's face it, you're, uh, you may be in the, in the graduate school and scholarship and all that, but he says, you're not, your heart's not in it, and you don't love it. He said, why don't you do something you love, which is performing and singing and, and acting. Well, you know, it brings up an excellent question, and that is, what should a parent do? How should a parent handle someone, a young child with a tremendous talent, which you had? Well, it's a difficult subject because uh, you don't know whether the child has the personality or whether he should go ahead with it or not, it, it's a very difficult thing to do. We were talking about that last night. Uh, Bob and I were saying that if Mac, who's too young now, but if he shows any talent, any musical talent, what should we do? Should we try to encourage him? We finally came to the conclusion that we should uh, give him a musical education. That we should insist on. 
perhaps learn the piano, no, no one instrument, but not pressure him any more than that. Just teach him a certain amount of music to give him pleasure, if nothing else, and to use some of this uh, natural talent. Then he can go on from there. If he shows no interest, forget it. Just be happy. That's the fine line, though, of how far to push him, because every parent... Just go parent, so far, yeah. I think. Let the kid take the... Uh, initiative and if he's not that anxious he won't do well anyway well he might like it but he might lack the discipline and that's yeah. where the parent starts pushing a little bit uh, by the way i think we're going to have a tv first in a minute we're going to meet your 10 month old son oh yes his first time anxious <laughs> to do this we'll pause for a minute and we'll wait for that moment good this portion of here is hollywood coming to you from encino is featuring the star of our show mackenzie duffy shuttleworth age 10 months <laughs> <laughs> your debut on television, and he gives out with a smile. Well, over here, over here is your close-up camera. Now, big smile, big smile, smile. <sighs> Giselle, and oh, we should introduce Bob Shuttleworth, your husband. Yes. Whose voice does he have? Yours or Bob's? Well, I don't know so far. I think he's uh. Well, when he's in good humor, he has one. Well, he's certainly in good voice. He's vocal. Let's sit down He's pretty loud, here. I'll tell you that. How many children do you plan on having? Do you know? Well, maybe, I don't know, three or four. Like three or him. four. That'd be nice. What is this going to do to your, your career plans, if anything? Well, you sort of sandwich them in, I guess. That's about it, Can Jack. this be done? Oh, of oh, course, sure. in your end of the business, I imagine you have to travel more mm -hmm. than the average person. Well, you take the kids with you. Well, Mac has traveled uh, 30,000 miles by about jet. About that, yeah. How'd you and Bob meet? Well... Well, we met at the Naval Barracks in Toronto, in Canada. What were you doing at a Naval Barracks? I was singing for the boys. Oh, and you were what? I was in the Canadian Navy. In the Canadian mm -hmm. Navy. At one time, didn't you employ Giselle? Yes, shortly after that. Well, well, well I started a dance band, and uh, I had three girl violinists. Giselle was first violinist. First violinist. <laughs> a top job. We talked all about the, the violin playing outside. One thing I didn't get to outside, Giselle, that I was curious about, was this extreme dedication, and uh, not dedication, that's the wrong word, the extreme intensive training that you had as a child in violin. Do you feel that this affected your personality and that you were balking against it inside today? Well, no, except that it's made me uh, uh, a very sort of a dutiful person in this sense, that I always feel I should be doing something. You know, I, I, there's something I should be accomplishing right now, all the time. I mean, you're wasting time talking to me. Thanks a lot. <laughs> no, I didn't mean no, that. No, I know that. But um, I feel that every minute in the day should be used up. I hardly ever just sit down and read or something. Because I feel, gee, I should be doing something. There must Rehearsing. Be something. Rehearsing. Yeah, or something. You know? Now, Bob, you're, you manage Giselle, and obviously there are a lot of advantages to a combination team like this. Would you say there are any disadvantages? No, I wouldn't say so. Well, we agree. We uh, discuss things and... Uh, we usually agree on business. All well, for instance, in singing, is this, is this a, a manager's decision, what song, or is this something that you have to feel? Well, you discuss it and you uh, talk about what things would be best and what do you think, and he says, what do you think, and we discuss it and usually we agree. We always finally agree. You don't disagree about anything? Not about business, no. What? We disagree it's things around the house. Like, are the potatoes well done or what have you? You know, I, you make, we make mild comment here. This is an ideal situation that you do get along so well. I imagine there's quite a portion of the audience at home that couldn't stand the idea of having the husband around all the time oh, or I, vice versa. And I think that's a shame. I think this is great. It is. I think it'd be awful if... Uh if Bob had to go away or, uh, you know. You'd, you'd be apart. Benny did a lot for your career. I always think of Jack Benny and Giselle oh. McKenzie. Well, when did you meet Benny? Well, I met him when I was on radio on Club 15, when I was with Bob Crosby on Club 15. And uh, uh, Mr. Benny uh, had his radio show next door. Now, when we went to Las Vegas the first time uh, with Bob Crosby's Club 15, Mr. Benny came up to see uh, the show, you see, just to, because Bob was working on his radio show. So he saw me and didn't actually know I played the violin at the time. And he remembered me when he went on tour that summer, a three-month tour, and asked me if I'd go with him. And I was just so thrilled. And of course, Bob said, well, you should tell uh, Mr. Benny that you play the violin. And I said, oh, forget it. I put it away and I don't want to play. So Bob naturally sneaked over and told Jack. 
And Jack was, uh, he said, what an idea. You oh, it was I... just a natural. It would have been ridiculous. He said, you understand. little devil, come up here and play for me, you know. And that was the start of a wonderful romance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Giselle. I Thank wish you, we Jack. had more time. Bob, good Thank to see you, you again. Jack.